What is up survivors today we are going to be talking about shadow main taming. Now this is kind of an annoying tame but the animal is really useful. You can need a lot of stuff but let's talk about what you're going to need beforehand before we get too far into it. Alright so taming these guys is a passive tame and you actually need to tame them with fish in a fish basket. That means you would have to take a fish basket, tame the fish in the fish basket, put that fish basket on your last hot bar and then sneak up on these guys and feed them. If that wasn't hard enough, you're not really going to be able to use your tech armor out here because you need to go undetected and sneak up to these guys. So we're talking Gilly Suit, Cactus Broth, um, probably even Bug Repellent because of how much other, uh, all the other nasty stuff that's floating around out here. I would highly advise stacking all three of those together. Um, you'll find these guys just kind of roaming around general in Rockwell's Garden all over the place, um, but predominantly you want to find them when they're laying down and that's how you're going to tame them. Um, get all that stuff together find yourself the shadow main and we'll get into it all right so we got a level 15 up here and i am currently using aha there we go not laid down so i'm currently using the cactus broth and the bug repellent for a couple of reasons mainly because there's just a lot of stuff out here that kind of wants to kill you but really i'm doing it so i can sit out here safely and watch this guy and still use the tech suit to jump around now that we got a tech suit on here and now that we've got textured over here, we can swap over to the ghillie. Um, using these three things combined makes it really hard for n any sort of animal to kind of aggro after you. And it looks like I'm climbing back up here. Hold, please. Well, um, also pay attention to where you're walking, obviously, because that's a bad thing to do, too. But mainly, uh, we want to have that fish basket in our last slot. And we just want to walk up on these guys while they're laying down. Come to the back end of them. Don't come to them head on. Come to them from the back and you'll have the prompt to feed them the fish yeah, basket and that is on. it now obviously this is a super lower level uh whistle stop passive we got a couple of mods on here too so we're gonna make life a lot easier and we'll go back to base and check him out so key things to take away from this this was a low level so it only took one fish to tame it the bigger the fish, the better the tame is going to be as well so the bigger the fish easier it's going to be to tame these guys that's going to be a thing um Outside of that, that's pretty much it. Uh, takeaways, obviously, if it's a higher level, you're going to need to do this multiple times, which is why I had the net gun here. Um, if I were to hit it with the fish basket and it didn't do it in one tame, I will net gun this guy and then run away and get outside of render. The idea is that keep it in place, get outside of render for it to de-aggro, and then rinse repeat with the fish again. But highly recommend using the bug repellent, the cactus thing, and the ghillie suit all at the same time. All right, so once tamed, they'll have a natural armor to them as well, so they don't actually get a saddle. It'll depend on uh, the, the level of, from what I've noticed anyway, the level of the Shadow Mane, and then also based on the quality of the uh, the quality of the taming that you're going to get on it as well. And it, you can't like unequip these or switch them around either, so it behooves you to find a really high level one and then also get the best taming effect of this on it as well. Um, fish basket taming is the only way to tame these guys. It's really, really, really can be really pain in the butt. Um, low level ones, obviously, is a bit easier because it's pretty much just a one and done sort of thing. Um, but the high level ones where you have to do this multiple times can be super frustrating because of the spoil timer of your fish in the basket and all that good stuff too. Um, what I would recommend is maybe try kiting them, uh, kiting the ones that you want towards a water source and then just kind of lining it up there. So these guys do have some cool abilities. Obviously, your your standard attack is this bite attack that kind of alternates between the claw swiping. Once you kill enough things and this bar charges up, however, if you hold in the attack, I'll do this like a, like claw attack, this little pounce attack. What that will do is inflict a bleed on creatures, and if you manage to kill the creature because of it, it'll fill your bar all the way up. So you can see it's drained because I used it, but it'll actually fill all the way back up. Uh, hitting C takes you into a cloaked mode, and as you can see, I'm moving a little bit slower, and you can see the little red footpads where I'm at. Um, these actually will do this in the wild, and those footpads are dead giveaway as to where they are. Hit C again and poop right back up. Now, some of these abilities like the, that ability actually kind of uh, really, they're really more helpful when you're running a pack of these guys. So I would recommend running a pack between two to three of them at least and then mixing, make sure they're mate boosted as well. So what will actually happen is the pack leader will make that yell and then all the whole pack will go into this cloaked ability all by itself, which is pretty cool. Um, the other thing that you get is a roar ability that the males will get, but only if they have a female present within the pack. And that's like a hold C option and you'll actually do like a roar ability, but you'll see ability requires mate boost. So you have, they have to be mate boosted in order for that to work. Um, they do just have like a natural jump as well. And then if you hold the jump button in and kind of aim in a direction, they will jump. And these guys jump incredibly far straight up in the air. They'll do like backflips. You can use it to use it as momentum on the way back down, which is pretty funny. 
like they don't take any fall damage so you can these guys can traverse a lot of this biome most of the biome in and out of this biome honestly pretty easily mainly because of this jump and the resistance to fall damage and as you can see i can clear up to the top area pretty easily you can combo this with some other abilities that we're going to talk about too um, making these guys uh very 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 useful traversing honestly both of these biomes i would say more so the garden because of how nasty it can be but definitely both biomes um, they travel, as you can see, they travel pretty well in the water as well. And the cool thing, no oxygen stat. These guys can hang out underwater for however long you need to. Holding in left click is kind of funny. So left click will hold in and you'll get this range of things that it's going to hit. And it will combo hit a bunch of these things and stun them. It'll bounce off of everything in the general area of it and stun them too. Making these guys, again, they're like perfect for ambushes between the stealth, the jumping ability, and then the ability to kind of bounce off of everything. It makes them absolutely perfect for that. Definitely ambush style pack animals that work together. Even just a team of uh, tribe mates riding these guys, their stats get incredibly better. You get a pack animal, you get, you get the pack bonus, and then you get all the cool extra abilities on top of it. They're pretty awesome out here, I gotta say. Um, very hit and run though. I would say drawback should be because you still set low to the ground. You're still you're still gonna have to eat things like Capros grabbing you off the of mounts. Um, watch out for Noglins, obviously. Um, things that could still dismount you are still gonna be able to dismount you. So you want to pay attention to that. But again, having a pack to to back you up though is super easy. Um, mainly if you have a couple of these and a Capro jumps you off, chances are these guys are gonna wreck that Capro pretty quickly. Uh, obviously the two passenger thing is pretty cool. The idea is to be able to do that. Uh, the dash attack is super useful though, especially if you get to jump on just about whatever you're fighting. You hit it with that dash and then they're stunned. And what you can do is team this up with a couple of tribe mates on these guys and continuously stun bigger targets and take it down without it actually being able to put up much of a fight. Top that up with the bleed attack and you got yourself a pretty good killy force. Uh, it's a high reward for being such a pain in the butt to tame. Um, this guy, these guys are not easy to tame, nor are they typically all that fun, but you can breed them. So because once you get the couple of high levels that you want, you can breed your own little army of them and not necessarily have to do this 500 times. Um, I dig it. I think there's some cool uses to it. Um, the saddle part kind of it makes it basically so if you're not a high level one of these it's not really all that worth it but that doesn't really bother me too much i think if you're going to go through the effort of taming one of these guys you're probably going to go through the effort uh, and tame a pretty good one i would think anyway but that's pretty much it guys that's just shadow main in a nutshell general abilities where you're going to find them how to tame them how they work taming these guys is fun but is a huge reward for taming these guys they have a lot of cool abilities and i absolutely love the color schemes on these guys they're all bright and frilly and look great but as always, guys, thanks for watching. Thanks for hanging out. I will see you on the next one.